In this chapter, we will be learning Salesforce DX for the Scratch Orgs. So the agenda is package development model and steps to set up Salesforce DX for the Scratch Org. Now, first of all, we have to understand that what is Salesforce DX. So Salesforce DX adds the new tool that streamlines the entire development lifecycle. It helps in providing an alternative to change the development and shifts the source of truth from the org to the version control system. And it also shifts the development focus from org development to the package development. So basically in package development, it creates the self-contained application that are deployed as a single package. SFDX helps in creating the scratch org. So what is this scratch org? These are all consisting of Salesforce code or metadata that can be easily created or destroyed. So it helps in increasing the speed in development process because they are temporary and from 1 to 30 days they are there. We can choose the number of days for which we need the scratch or and then we can delete them. The advantages of scratch all are that they are convenient. So they are easily created and deleted. They are configurable. We can choose the addition, the features, and they are disposable. That is, we can delete when we are done with it. So the use of scratch orgs is like to start a new project, to start a new feature branch, to test a new feature, to start automated testing, perform development tasks directly in an org, start from scratch, with fresh new org. So all are the use cases for creating a scratch org. But we need to remember that scratch org are not replacing sandbox. Scratch org are temporary and they do not include any production data. The scratch org complement sandboxes. Like we already discussed, they are temporary deployments and use them for peer review and a way to get enhanced test coverage and automation. And that is the reason we use the scratch orgs. So now let's see how we create one. So we'll do control shift P and this time we will be saying SFDX create project, not create project with manifest. So once we click on create project, we use standard and we give the name to the project. So let's see, we say SFDC LWC Scratch. Now it asks for the location. So I say, okay, desktop is the location. Now it starts creating the project. Now the project is being created. You can see here. So we have the configuration file with project scratch definition. We have SFDX project JSON and all of them are being created here. Force app with all the classes and everything. All of them are being there. So that's how we are able to create it. Now, once it is being created, you see there's SFDX and all of them are here. So now let's see how it works so once you have created with so but you cannot see any package.xml here right because we have not created the create project with manifest so that's how it works now we have to authorize a dev hub so i will do control shift p sfdx and we say authorize a dev hub So once we do that, we can authorize an org. This is a production environment. I have created an org. So we create here. Now we need to go to the dev hub. So before that, we have created the project. Next is to authorize a dev hub. 
the dev hub lets you create and manage the scratch orgs. So let's see. We will click on dev hub. So see, it create and manage the scratch orgs from the command line. They are disposable and used to support the development and testing. They are fully configurable. And then they comes in different editions, different features and preferences. And information includes like they are active, expired, deleted, and you can link the namespace or to the dev hub org. And what we need to understand is like, you cannot disable the setting once enabled. So see, we cannot disable it. So just go ahead and authorize a dev hub and enable the dev hub. Once that is being done, you are able to enable the dev hub. That's it. Once that is done, you go back. Let's understand the limitations of dev hub. So you can enable it in production trial or developer or only system administrator can enable this feature. No other profile can. You cannot disable dev hub first enabled like we saw. You cannot enable the dev hub in the developer org that has a namespace assigned to it. And you can create a, a, up to six scratch orgs and package version per day with a maximum of three active scratch orgs. So that's, uh, these are the limitations. Now we have to see that how we push and pull from org. So let's go ahead. Now, if I go to the force app right now, I go to the classes and here we don't see anything in the class. So let's quickly go ahead and first of all, how we can open this org. So first of all, we have created our default scratch org. So now if you go to the JSON, yes, you can see that here the default dev hub username is being created. Now. After doing this, we do Control Shift P and create a default scratch org. Once that is being done, you choose the project scratch org definition file. And this is the definition file I want to choose. Click here, create a scratch or uh, alias name, and see the number of days for which you want the scratch org. So the maximum is 30 days and minimum is one day, and the default value is seven. So let's put it for seven days and select enter. So now it is creating a default scratch of first. Let's give it a moment for creating it. So now you can see the default scratch org is created. Let's see in the terminal. So see, it said that create a default scratch org. Here it said that this is the definition file you use and then put the set alias name, put the duration and then it said exit zero as in there is no problem and it has created it. Now you can see this SFDC scratch is rare. Now go to the terminal and you will put SFDX force arc. Okay, let's see. See, you are able to. Open the scratch org now. So now it's successfully able to create the scratch org and then you are able to open the scratch org. Now let's do some changes here. So go here and Let's see, there are classes, nothing is there. Now do Control Shift P and then you create an Apex class. Once you create an Apex class, let's do the same thing. Let's give it the name hello world 
and choose the location that we want it in the classes. And once you do that, it will create an Apex class. So you can see that Hello World CLS is being created and it is this one. Now we want to deploy this class. So now you cannot see the deploy here. So what you need to do for scratch org is control shift P SFTX and then you do you have to pull the source from default scratch org or you have to push the code source to default scratch org. So we need to push. So you will click here and you'll be simply pushing it. So now click on show. Once we click on show, you will be seeing that with the class name hello world and the template apex class was created. And after that, it was being deployed to the scratch org. So this has been push source. So now if we want to check, we'll go here. We will go to our apex class. And here we will be seeing that hello world is already been there as we have pushed it. Now, if you want to edit the class and say like public string hello world, and we want to write something. And we save it. Once it is saved, we'll go here and this time we will be retrieving it so what we will do here now we have to sfdx and we need to pull this time so we will say pull source from default scratch org So you can see here that now we are able to see our changes and it is able to pull and push.